I'll show you how to make use of variable font support, which opens up more granular control over font parameters instead of having fixed values or presets. I'll start with a very straightforward example. I have this text selected, which is using a variable font, and I'll double click it on the layers panel to zoom to it. On the context toolbar, I can see that its current font style is set to black, and I have a number of presets here to choose from. However, if I click on the font variation settings, this exposes the axes or individual controls. The font author has only exposed weight for this font, but we'll see some more advanced examples soon. I can move the slider to experiment with more precise weight values rather than being restricted to preset values determined by the font author. If I move to 700, notice that this is the weight value for the bold style. I may want a slightly stronger weight, in which case I can also type a specific value. Or I could also hover the cursor over the input field and scroll up and down with the mouse wheel so you are not just restricted to the stops on the slider. Here's another example. On this design, I have this question mark text layer, which I'll select and duplicate with Command J on Mac, Control J on Windows. I'll move this duplicated copy down and to the right, scale it down, and rotate it slightly. Then, on the font variation settings, I'll reduce both weight and width. I'll create another duplicate, moving it down further, reducing its scale, and also rotating it. Then, on the font variation settings, I'll reduce the weight and width further. Then, I'll also increase the optical size. Having access to variable font axes gives me further control over variation between these three text layers. On another design, I'll show you a useful practical example. With this text, I'll open the font variation settings and increase the optical size. Then I'll double click and select the middle line of text. And I'll increase the weight separately, all the way to 800. Then, to better align it with the dividers, I'll reduce the width. I can use the mouse wheel scroll technique to fine tune this alignment, holding Option on Mac, Alt on Windows to move in smaller increments until I find the perfect value. As a final example, I'll also demonstrate that the Affinity apps can expose hidden axes, which provide further parametric control over font rendering. I'll double click into this group and select the two top text layers. And on the font variation settings, I can enable Show Hidden Axes. This reveals a few extra options, and just by experimenting with these parameters, I can further customize how the main text looks on this design. Caution should be exercised when manipulating hidden axes, as it can be all too easy to compromise the integrity of the font glyphs but when used in moderation, they can open up more creative possibilities. Finally, I'll select the text below and use the hidden uppercase height axis to make each line of text taller. As I reduce the optical size, some of the text becomes hidden because it no longer fits into the bounds of the frame. To remedy this, I can increase the size of the frame text box. And there we go some examples of how to use variable fonts in Affinity Publisher. Thank you for watching.